welcome back to Random Librarian here on YouTube! Anyways, dramatic start because last night we finally watched Hamilton. I had a lot of fun to watch it uh, with a friend of mine who was British who was so confused. <laughs> so, so confused. She actually saw it live too, which I'm extremely jealous of. Didn't know any of the words, so was like super lost because so much of what happens is delivered through song. And also, um, she never really learned about American history in history class, which, um, you know what? Good call, honestly. But here we are. I, of course, was just as obsessed as anyone else when Hamilton first started making the news and uh, touring in 2016. Um, I'm very jealous of the different family members and Anna, my British friend, for being able to go and see it. One of my family members has seen it more than once. So, uh, we're in a fight, but <laughs> it was really great to finally see it, even if it's just through Disney Plus and kind of on a screen, which is obviously a different feel than on a stage. But I hope that this and the success of Hamilton on Disney Plus will inspire more stage productions to film them and make their art more accessible to people who are not super rich and super white and able to go to a theater. So that's my jam about that. But as a result of watching Hamilton, that's kind of where my brain is at. So here comes the Hamilton book tag. Number one is the room where it happens. So this is a book world you would put yourself in. So if it's like a realistic world that I would want to live in. I have said this before and I'm sure I will say it again, but red, white, and royal blue because I want to live in an America that um, had a female president for the past four years and is gearing up to have another one for the next four years. And her wonderful son who is in the world's most public and from the pages of this book, well-accepted relationship with a Prince of England. I think that is a much more accepting and wonderful world that I want to live in. Yeah, I mean, if you haven't read this, I don't really know what else to tell you because <sighs> it made me so happy. Like, I, I was, especially near the end where they're like gearing up for re-election, I was just sitting there like, why don't I live in this version of America? Oh my god, I want to be in this book so bad. So, that's my answer for question one. Question two is the Skylar sisters, which is underrated female characters. And I, I don't really know how to approach this. Like, is it supposed to be undervalued by the people in the book or undervalued by, like, fandom? Because I'm, I'm interpreting it as the former because um, I don't want to piss anyone off in this fandom, but I feel like in Inej, or Inej, however you say her name in Six of Crows, is really underrated by the people in her squad uh, for the most part of that book because she's super skilled and like they definitely like understand how skilled she is and like how amazing it is that she can kind of just like not be heard and disappear but I don't think they truly realize how much they're all leaning on her emotionally and uh, how much she's taking care of like their group until she gets kidnapped. <laughs> And then they're like, oh shit, she was the one keeping us all cohesive. Um, and now they're getting all cohesive to go and get her back. I haven't read the second book yet though, so don't yell at me in the comments if I am super wrong about my opinions of uh, Six of Crows. <laughs> my shot is a character that goes after what they want and doesn't let anything stop them. So this is a book that I definitely need to reread, but from what I remember, I am going to say Quoth, Fatha, however the hell you say his name, the main character in The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Um, I have book one and book two, and I am very excited to do a reread of this once I get um, a little bit more headway into my current DBR of books that I have not read at all. Stay Alive, a character you wish was still alive. So I don't have this book with me, but I would have to say Lydia from Everything I Never Told You, even though it would mean that that book like literally doesn't exist because the whole plot revolves around whether she died accidentally, was murdered, committed suicide. 
Um, I just, that book broke my heart and I would love nothing more to have a book where she didn't die and we got to see all of them have a happy ending because, oh my god, those poor kids, they deserve a happy ending. That's all I got to say on that. Like, that's it. Burn, uh, the most heartbreaking end to a relationship you've ever read. I don't read, like, too much relationship-based. No, I guess most, not like, fiction is relationship-based. But, like, I don't know. They haven't really struck me. Like, maybe The Time Traveler's Wife, because that's really dramatic and also really traumatic. And um, when he loses his feet, it's like, oh, shit. Like, stuff's about to go down. And, like, maybe, but if we're just saying, like, that the most traumatic end is, like, death, then that also covers a lot of different, like, books, book relationships that I've read. Like, Anna Kay was like that, but, like, I wasn't super mad about Vronsky because I'm just, I wish I liked Anna Kay more than I did. Um, I liked it. Didn't love it. Um, and teenagers. Teenagers and relationships. But then, like, if it's death. I think like the stories that I read that are true crime in real life are way more heartbreaking. Um, like reading The Stranger Beside Me and like hearing Anne Rule kind of have to wrestle with the fact that like her friendship with someone, Ted Bundy, is over because he's secretly been a monster the entire time they've known each other. Like that's kind of a horrific way to end a friendship. And then if we're also thinking about I'll Be Gone in the Dark, um, Michelle McNamara's husband has an afterword in that book and I was like sobbing on a plane on my way back from Paris when I read it because he's talking to their daughter about like their shared loss and that is just oh my god so painful so I think I would actually go with I'll Be Gone in the Dark even though it's not like fictional characters um because that hit very different like very very different then we have You'll Be Back, Sassiest Villain. So I think of like books that I have with me, I'd have to say The Gilded Wolves. I don't know if you can technically class Hypnos as a villain because he just wants, he just wants them to be his friend. He just wants them to be his friend. And yeah, but he's very sassy. Everyone in this book is very sassy. This is by Roshani Chukchi. I think I would say that, but like also, any villain in a V. Schwab book, like, I think is up there. She likes the sass. The Reynolds Pamphlet. A book with a twist that you didn't see coming. Oh my gosh, in all caps, I have written Girl, Serpent, Thorn. This book comes out, I'm filming this on the 5th, it comes out on the 7th, and it is full of twists and turns. Oh my god. Don't look up too much of it, just pre-order it and um i have it on audio like i went and bought it on audio i gave away my arc because i wanted a friend of mine to read it and then she wanted a friend of hers to read it and i want everyone to read this book it's so good like don't i didn't know anything going into it i knew nothing and i was just constantly like gasping at the twists and the turns and the like beautiful narrative of this book please go read it please go read it that's how i'm gonna end that Girl, Serpent, Thorn. Look at it. It's also, it's gorgeous. Yeah, there it is. Oh my god. So good. So good. I'm gonna continue talking this up until I no longer have um, access to social media because it's that good. And then eight is Nonstop, a book you marathoned. So recently, I think that would have to be Beach Read by Emily Henry. So I had this one on audio and then Anna also has this copy. So I, I was listening to it at two times speed and finished it in a day. My phone died and I had to finish it in the paperback copy, but I finished it in a day and it was really good. It was, it was a good like lighter, but still like meaningful book. Not that light books can't be meaningful. I don't know. Yeah. But marathoned it. Really liked it. Might have to reread it because the details are a little fuzzy, but very good. Nine, satisfied favorite book with multiple POVs. So I had two for this, but I'm saving 
the other one for the next question. Uh, the Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin, I think, handles multiple POVs in the best way I have ever read. Oh my god, I still have one book left and I'm like holding on to it because I don't want it to be over. It's so good, but also, wow, what a cliffhanger for this one. So I kind of want to just jump in, walk in that fine line. Here we are. So this has done so well. Book one, I think, is even better, which, um, skip ahead a couple seconds if you haven't read it, but because you think you're reading multiple POVs, but then it's the same character at different parts of her life, I thought that was so interesting and just so well done. So, N.K. Jemisin is a genius. Um, this series, specifically the Broken Earth trilogy, handles multiple po point of views just incredibly well. That's all there is to it. Um, number 10 is Who Lives, Who Dies, Who Tells Your Story, a book or series that will be remembered and, like, told in history forever. The Color Purple. This book, like, I'm genuinely mad at myself for not having read it before now, before my 26 years of life. W what can be said about this other than it's art, it's gorgeous, it is, like, fully capturing a moment, like, a horrible moment. A horrible lifetime of moments but still somehow just so hopeful and so beautiful like stark and incredible and just deserving of all accolades and all awards I want everyone to read this book it's gorgeous also just mm, the color purple Alice Walker genius and then I have a bonus question which is 11 and it is helpless a relationship you were pulling for from the start and it has to be in Felix Ever After. Uh, it opens with Felix and his best friend just on a train being adorable and cute and um, just wonderful and they're so supportive of each other from Go and they just make me so happy. I love them so much and I think it's just very telling when even in like a teenager love story where someone's like I can see our whole life going out before us where we'll be like the cute high school sweethearts and we'll actually still love and support each other through everything and I was just like that's what I want for you so much oh my god yes so Felix Ever After read this if you haven't already Oh my god, I loved it. So yeah, that is the Hamilton book tag. Uh, I would love to tag anyone who would like to be tagged, uh, and I had a lot of fun pulling this together, but it didn't quite hit what I wanted from it, so I kind of made my own um, tag that I'm going to do in the next video as well, but that's just kind of based on like the characters and what I think they match up with, rather than the songs, which I think is, you know, a great way to do it as well. So I'm gonna say keep an eye out for that. Uh, hopefully I'll get it up soon. I have a bunch of video videos filmed but I need to actually just like sit down edit a whole bunch of them and like set up a consistent posting schedule. But keep an eye out for that soon. The Hamill Squad booktube book tag instead of Hamilton booktube book tag. If you guys have watched it on Disney Plus and want someone to chat about it with, my DMs are always open on uh, Instagram and Twitter. I don't really know how to do DMs on um, BookTube, but if you want to teach me, they're open there too. <laughs> I hope I, get, I will see. Oh my goodness. I hope I will see you guys soon in another video. And until then, happy reading.